Hey everyone, welcome to my post-apocalyptic Monopoly bunker. Well, we do film the uh, Monopoly Rant Rage podcast thing, which was, was supposed to be airing, but now it sort of isn't because, you know, the whole end of the world thing. But it's fine. It's fine, right? Because... It's not fine at all, actually. All my, I can't play Monopoly with myself, because that would be, I'm not a loser. But there's no one else. I'm, like, the only one alive, to my knowledge. Uh, so, that's sort of an, an issue. It, it didn't end. The world, that is, didn't quite end of nuclear fallout, like we had all anticipated. Except for a, a virus that sort of killed everything, you know. The one, the one named after the beer that isn't around anymore, because again, the end of Earth. But there's one thing, there's one thing that still survived. I mean, not my recording equipment, not my stand, not my, not anything. That's why I'm using some beds here that I found in a camera that I somehow managed to <laughs> retrieve from the uh, nuclear winter. But it's not really a winter, because no nuclear shit has happened. Anyways. My point is, is that there's one thing that survived this whole catastrophe, and that thing is YouTube. The, you know, that website, because every cockroach survives the apocalypse. I was working on a video about a, a game that was about the end of the world, about the nuclear one, not the, um, the beer one. So, I decided to release it. And, and to see how many views it gets, because because that'll let me know how many people are still alive from this whole tr tragic, you know, catastrophic event that killed off almost all of humanity, from my knowledge. Uh, but hey, uh, I hope I hope you're watching. I hope you're watching. Oh please, God! Oh God! It's the end of the world. It's over. It's over. Take yourself back five years ago, where a game was announced by the name of Fallout 4. It's all over, but the cry. With the world poised on the brink of war, vault -Tec is reporting a record number. So the hype train has officially left the station, and we're all getting a bit antsy. But don't worry, this is Bethesda's biggest game ever. Bigger than New Vegas. It's bigger than Skyrim. It's even bigger than NHRA Drag Racing. And they did. Bethesda's best game by far. Massive landslide. Not even a competition. Fallout 4 is the greatest Bethesda creation, and they did it. Or did they? So there are uh, two things you need to know. One is that I, I this isn't actually my gameplay. I, I, I nabbed it from somewhere. I, I don't know. I can't remember. This was such a long time ago. Some loser, probably. Uh, but but most importantly, number two, I am not very good at video games. And number three is that I know what the description said. I know what the title said. I know what the intro said. But you, it's it's wrong. It's a review of the entire Fallout franchise. Because when you really think about about it, Fallout Four is the perfect representation for the Fallout series as a whole up to this point, which I'll get into later, because this is, this is the gameplay part, and that's not like the others at all. So moving into gameplay, well it's the exact same with every Bethesda game, stiff, unresponsive, and completely 
held back and ruined by the stupid fucking creation engine. The creation engine is so bad, I'm surprised Fallout 4 even runs at all. But runs it does, but not very fucking well. There's so many glitches and bugs in Fallout 4, it, I'm, it's, it's surprising that this is a full game. It feels like an unfinished and, and beta. one of the game, you know, the one you're not seeing, because fuck that. Relatively speaking, there were less bugs than previous Bethesda titles, but even then, countless occasions, I would walk up to an NPC, NPC I'm supposed to be talking to. The dialogue wouldn't work, and I couldn't talk to them, so I'd reload the game, and then when I went back to talk to them, the game would fucking crash. That happened at least ten times in within five hours of playing. How do you leave that in the game? You're paying... I paid 60 bucks for something that runs about as well as Stephen Hawking. And speaking of the late great Mr. Hawking, he's the perfect metaphor for the creation engine. Sure, he walks perfectly fine, and in theory, but he's not exactly the most robust. And are we really surprised? Because this game engine hasn't been <laughs> substantially updated in any way in nearly two decades. But look, yes, it does run smoother and feels a lot better than other Bethesda games, such as Fallout 3, New Vegas, and Skyrim, but that's not exactly a fucking achievement. Remember how awful those games are to control? They are absolutely abysmal. I can't even get through the first mission in Fallout New Vegas without having to put my controller down, stop looking at the horrible gra graphics, and consider whether life is worth living. And in any other world that accepts Fallout 3 as a perfectly good, controllable game without any issues, and just accepts it in their hearts, is a planet that doesn't dissolve life in the force fucking place. And part of the big reason these games control like you've just been set into rigor mortis is the absolutely awful control scheme. I mean, what sort of acid trip would you have to be on to think that this is an acceptable control format? I mean, what the fuck is this? I mean, why for jump? What the fuck are you playing at? So in short, for, for while it is, yes, a technical improvement on both Fallout 3 and New Vegas, is it really? It's it's still pretty outdated and it still feels like it had the budget of about three dollars and the Snickers bar. So yeah, it, it's it's I mean it's it's all right. It's that's that's it. Uh, I'll give it like a like a two out of ten. Oh, no, who gives a shit? Alright, fine, here we go. So you play as middle-aged man number 18,406, or woman. Now you're just having a normal day, uh, reading the paper, eating breakfast, when uh, this man comes to your house and tries to sell you V-Bucks. Alright guys, so in today's video we are going to be talking about the one thousand subscriber giveaway doing a two thousand v buck giveaway this is going to be super super simple guys really easy to enter as well all you have to do to be entered into this so as it turns out there's the an apocalypse happening so you run to the vault as quickly as possible but you're too late hey i love you oh my god this is what happens when you don't control reddit so now that you're inside the vault, you're now being taken to your high-class, very luxury housing. But something doesn't feel quite right. In five, four, three, two, one. Wow, what a shock. Vault tech lied about something. Someone comes in and kidnaps your son. You then come out 
to the world and see that Los Santos has been burnt to the ground or something. I don't know, it looks like fucking PUBG. Your goal is to reach the Institute, the people who kidnapped your son. These people make synths, synthetic beings, people such as Jake and Logan Paul, Casey Neistat, Tanner Mojo, and some even leave the Institute quite defective, such as Fuzitu and Jojo Siwa. You should subscribe to the Insuminator. Why? Because the Insuminator are the best. They're strong, they're confident, they're powerful, they believe in themselves, they believe in everyone. No, great amazing thing. Gives me conniptions. Alright, so long story short, Sean is the leader of the Institute and in six years has passed, and who fucking cares? It was so boring. Do you, I, you know, I could talk about the railroad or the Minutemen, but who gives a shit? Alright, the story was garbage. You, you leave a vault in search of an old scientist who's related to you. Hmm, I wonder where, where I've seen that. That. For fuck's sakes, Bethesda, are you this lazy that you couldn't even write a new story for your flagship title? This game sold millions upon millions of copies. It was one of the most hyped games I think I've ever heard. And, and, and you blew it. You know, this could have been interesting. This could have been an interesting concept. But it wasn't. Because Bethesda couldn't be fucked to... to write it to actually give a shit about the game they were making it's, it, it, who the who the fuck greenlit this because i want to meet them and i want to eat their heart you bunch of rat bastards and i won't even mention the fact that finding the railroad literally is just following a line a fucking line through destroyed boston are you shitting me? And it doesn't really matter that you find the Institute or who you side with, because no matter what, you're always just nuking Boston again for the second time for some reason. Who... It doesn't matter. You bomb the city again. That you don't have a choice of whether you do it or not. It's just, are you bombing it for who? Who are you bombing it for? Who the fuck thought that... The no matter what, all three endings should be the same ending. So, look, 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 look. We need a verdict. One out of ten. One out of ten for story. Absolute disappointment. Bad in every way. But what about for the whole game? Well, let's take that to the analyst table. <laughs> Remember back in the beginning, when I said that Fallout 4 was the, quote, metaphor for the Fallout franchise? Well, let's go back to that and actually answer it. Because it is. It starts out brilliant with Fallout 3 and New Vegas, and then it just sort of slowly descends into disappointment. And the ending, which would be Fallout 76, because of fucking course it is, just leaves you with a bad taste in your mouth. And it shows a dangerous trend. Not just with Bethesda, but for all game developers. In a business where passion is key, we seem to be losing the passion. The Fallout franchise is just yet another victim, but maybe one day we'll will be wrong. But, let's be real. Do you really want Fallout 6 or 69 or Fallout New Vegas 2 or whatever they call it? Because there's a good chance you'll just be disappointed. Because it'll be more of 4 and 76 than 3 in New Vegas. You know that. I know that. We all know that. But some of us can't accept it. So, just be careful for what you ask for. Look, I don't hate Fallout 4. I kind of, I mean, I did like it. It's, 
it's the best Fallout game. G Gameplay-wise, but then again, that's not a you know, big step as we covered in part one. I'm, the point is, is that this showed both the best and worst of the series. And, yeah, that's, that's sort of it. I think the video's over now. I, I don't know what to do. Maybe, I think we should throw it back to the, 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 the me in the vault, or the bunker. Because that's the thing that's still happening, I think. Yeah, right. Well, I guess bye. Let's go, pal. It's the end of the video. That means it's over, and so is YouTube. It ended with me, the one true God. And speaking of things being over, uh, so is the wall, if you don't remember. So please, uh, bear, uh, take care, I guess, if you're still watching this. Uh, and there's only one thing left for me, Danger to a king of YouTube, to do, and that's go out and Explore the world, what's left of it, at least. It's not biblical to be gay, but it's also biblical to stone people who are gay. Do you also agree with that? Are you really thinking about this? Hello, everybody.